this is? Hey. Brittany, get the shot. Hey. Do you know who this is? If you don't, you need to. <laughs> we just left the gym where Daniel collectively kicked our butts and we're driving back to the ranch now and this is like a full submersion in barrel racing boot camp. This is like day in the life with world champions, traveling partners, like the whole squad. So I want to take advantage of this opportunity and just pick their brains and get as much information out of them as possible. I also still have a job back home. So I'm actually on a conference call right now for work. Multitasking. We are multitasking right now. So we're gonna just make this happen because I don't want to waste a minute of this experience. Okay, so I've asked some of my uh, friends and fam on Instagram what things I should ask you guys. Okay, it's uh, Hope on Foot asked, um, Hey beautiful, why you are with Alan and Jenna, could you guys talk about the amazing confidence you all have? It seems like all three of you carry that in the arena, the gym, work, life. I'd love to hear that discussion. So, talk okay. to me. Um, I have always been super insecure about all the things that are normal in women. So appearance, body type, accomplishments. Um, always been super insecure. And one thing that my parents did when I was a little kid, I was incredibly shy. And I know that's weird for a lot of people to understand now because I'm so outspoken and flamboyant and way out there. My parents threw me in acting classes. And so from really early on, um, I was taught to pretend. And I think that that's really, really cool. And if you if you think that that's crazy, um, I have a short story about my, I had some friends in LA that were rappers. And they would rap about all these cars that they drove and, and these Ferraris and these whatever else. But they would have to Uber to the video shoots where they would be driving Bentleys that they rented for the day. But you give them 30 or 45 days of pretending this lifestyle and boom, they felt the feelings of that. They were expecting all those really cool things to happen. And they just kept taking action toward making those things happen and speaking it into existence. And if you study things about science, the brain, law of attraction, all these things combined, pretending and then taking massive action actually helps you to embody those things before you actually get them. And then you feel the feeling of confidence. So even if you aren't the most confident person in the room, you just feel the feelings of a confident person. How would you act if you were the most confident person in the room and then do that? So I found that that's always helped me. So when I'm the most nervous, I'm actually the best because when I'm nervous and Jenna's seen it, I go full force into that thing. Twice as hard as I normally would when I feel confident. So you're a fake until you make it kind of Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. What about you, Jenna? Um, similar. I pick up a lot of my tactics from this one. So I follow her around and try to match a mirror. She is somebody who I want to be where she is someday. So I try to do everything that she teaches to the best of my ability. And when you start out, you're a beginner. So when I started pro rodeoing, I would get so nervous. I almost couldn't even stand up. I was just beside myself. I tried to get my horse ready way too early. And the more you do anything, the better that you get at it. So there's no substitute for experience, but using the same belief system that Fallon, Fallon has has helped turn decades into days where I'm now to the point where I can confidently walk through the alley in Houston at a rodeo and not be nervous. And since I've been around that atmosphere and that environment and practiced um, my mental game and practiced my strategy for running, I'm starting to get to where I'm perfecting it and I am controlling my nerves, but it's something that you have to practice. So it didn't just come I mean, like that for you, right? No. You've been with Fallon for how many years now? For almost two years now, and I bought my horse from her when he was four, and so we both kind of started out as inexperienced, you know, rookies, and kind of built our way from the bottom to where we are now. So it's been fun to learn and grow with a horse who had as much to learn as I have um, and grow together. So I know all the ins and outs of him. I know exactly where he started from. I you know him probably better than anybody else in the whole entire world. So also what I'm hearing from that, Jenna, is that it's not just like fake it till you make it. You also have to work really hard at it, right? You know the ins and outs of your You put in the time and you have confidence right. that comes from knowing that like you've put in the time, you've done the work, you're ready for this, you're prepared for any circumstances. Absolutely. There's literally no substitute for hard work, but you can work smarter. So I know a lot of people are addicted to the hustle and the grind, but if you focus and you concentrate on the one thing every day that will get you closer to where it is, spectrum of things um, that's what we try to do every day rather than make a huge to-do list and stay really busy and feel good about ourselves and knock things off our to-do list we take a step back and say at the end of the year this is what I want to accomplish and this today is going to be the one thing that gets me the closest to that while I might have a bomb going off in my room 
how would a world champion practice? What time would a world champion wake up? How often would a world champion practice? What would a world champion's rig look like? What does a world champion's diet look like? Um, you know, how does a world champion dress? How does a world champion address her fans? How does a pro athlete treat their body as the newest yeah, one? Yeah, as the newest one. For so sure. that's where we're at now. It doesn't do you any good to just wish and hope and wait for your ship to come in. We feel like you need to take off swimming toward it. For sure. I feel like a lot of my confidence, to be honest with you, kind of comes naturally. I'm just a really, really competitive person, so I always believe like there's nothing I can't do. But I think the problem that I used to have was that my motivation and confidence came from, well, this person doesn't want me to succeed, and this person's a hater, and so I need to show them. And it came from this like almost place of like anger, and I just felt like the more people that were out to get me, the more motivated I became. Right. So I started feeding off really negative energy, and I don't want that anymore in my life. Right. I feel like my new trajectory is that you know I'm going to surround myself with positivity. I'm going to have people that want to cheer for me and want to see me do well, and that's where I'm getting my confidence now is from that positive reinforcement instead of out of you know that fear and like I'll show you kind of attitude once you go through the layers you can then find a really beautiful place to draw from to make your goals um, a reality I explained it to Jenna like this the other day starting off from wherever we're, you're starting off and imagine a thousand pound boulder and you're pushing it yep, on a plane down a hill and how much energy does it take just to make that boulder move a little bit once you get that boulder to move you can do it out of anger, hatred, whatever it is. I feel like as long as you're not a serial killer or an ax murderer, you can reach deep down to those painful places and make it work for you. And then once you get that boulder to move, it takes very little to keep it rolling. You just kind of have to keep your hands on it. And then you can go to those really positive places. It doesn't take much to keep that momentum up. You make a new standard for yourself. I know Jenna and I used to wear sweatpants and no makeup every single day. And take yeah. photos with fans that way. Yeah. yeah. And we just made a new standard. Just because that wasn't the standard in our industry and it was acceptable doesn't mean that that should be the standard for us. And it changed the type of and quality of food that we put into our bodies and the routine that we had and um, the quality of relationships that we're starting. And it changed everything that people wanted to be around us. I can tell you also, as a fan, I feel like the respect that you guys have for your fans and your following is unmatched, right? It's like, you um, you really respect these girls, right? And you treat them that way. And like, just now, like, you FaceTime with a girl that, you know, won the auction in that halter. I just think that's quite powerful. You're the sweetest one, Renee. <laughs> that you guys are so respectful and kind and, um, you know, like, Fallon, you'll see later rodeos and autographs like that. Like, nobody does that. And so I think that's really important. Like, um, talk a lot about the value you add back, but it's like to everyone. It's to the people you're never going to see again. I have learned that, um, the... <laughs> Sorry. Um, we're going to do some crying on this. Yeah. This is what we do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, okay, check out the list. We did it today. We've got to do this again. I already made my Uber driver cry. I didn't need to cry today. <laughs> um, I have learned... And no disrespect to anyone, but I've learned that my peers give very, add very little value, if any, to my life. Um, if anything, they have taken from what I'm trying to do. And um, I don't have as much respect for my peers as I once did. And I have double the respect for my fans that follow this journey and help um, me continue to push the boundaries and push the limits and open the doors for them. So I, I no longer care like I did about the people that want to talk trash or want to be competitors, want to be around me. I no longer consider them my peer group. Um, the people that are important to me are the fans. And everyone else can laugh, point fingers, talk trash online, walk by me without even so much as a hello. That's totally fine. I'm unaffected by that now. The people that matter to me are the people whose lives I can impact and change and add value to. And if those other people won't allow that in their lives, that's their loss from here on out. That's amazing. Okay, you guys talk a lot about, uh, Jenna specifically, about like the value you can add to Fallon and that's why you're in the circle. I wanna talk a little bit more specific, like personality traits. You know, Fallon, you have one of like the coolest tribes around. Everyone wants to be in right. part of your inner circle. Right. So what personality traits do you want in your friends, in your inner circle, in your tribe? Yep. Do it. Do it. A growth mindset. A growth mindset? Yep. So walk me through that. What does that mean? So like squad today, it looks so perfect from the outside in, but it didn't start that way. And we're all so unique and individuals that, you know, it's kind of cool how we all came together and we all have our own thing that we add value to everyone around us. But it didn't start that way. And the only consistent thing that I have seen through the years with everybody who's still on board and everyone who's pushing through the
they'll be nice to whomever they're around. That's a shocking thing. You know, we all, I'm a millennial and, and you grow up around people going, you can't sit with us or, you know, all it's these that way things. the rodeos, the practice pen or the warm-up pen is a freaking shark tank and it is a hostile environment. <laughs> Very hostile environment. And so to, to be um, the pretty confident chicks that also are the welcoming, warm, we want to love on you chicks, I think is a really cool thing that's extremely rare and it makes us all tick. Um, there's never going to be a moment that you're going to catch somebody off guard or somebody's not going to be on. There, it's not, nobody's playing a part. Nobody's playing a role. Everybody is genuine in wanting to help. Well, and I'll tell you that it's not only so rare, it almost doesn't seem real anymore because right. it is such a, a rare, rare commodity, especially among women. And I'll tell you, you know, one of my shortcomings for so long, it's kind of from the same place that I was motivated out of people not wanting me to succeed or people not believing in me. And I felt that way, especially about other women, but women like me, professional women, successful women, strong women. I, in my mind, was telling myself this narrative of they're threatened by me, they don't like me. Before I ever even like spoke to them or had a conversation with them or gave them a chance to like me, right. I had in my mind that they weren't gonna like me, so I don't like them back. Right. And so I would joke about, you know, oh, I'm just a guy's girl, you know, I don't have right. girlfriends, but I have made a concerted effort in the past year to surround myself with strong, positive women and uplift and encourage them in different ways and support their goals and dreams and do so just because it's the right thing to do, not right. because I expect anything out of them. And I think that that's something that I've seen you do and I really respect and admire that too. Awesome. Thank you. I, I always um, kind of kept to myself, I think, in the years past and um, it was really hard to find a group of girls and I, I always say I, I want really rich successful friends so I'm just trying to help girls that are awesome be rich and successful because it gives back so much to me it's so fulfilling um, to help see them do amazing things we're on a journey every day um, of success and it's one step at a time and there's nothing more fulfilling than watching your friend make it you know that's that's probably one of the coolest things too is that we're all on our own journey um, some of the girls own their own companies. Some of them work for me. Some of them are related. So it's just, it's just such a cool thing. I think anybody can have this kind of trip. And in a non-threatening environment, like you just said, like it's not someone else's success doesn't detract from your success. In fact, someone else's success is vital to my success. So it's actually the opposite of what you probably think. Um, you guys brought up all of your different businesses and you're all moguls. And so share as much as you're comfortable sharing, but I really want to ask, why are you doing all this? Is it to expose more people to your mindset? Is it to commercialize and help pay the bills as you go down the road? Is it maybe a hybrid? Like, why are these brands and side businesses important to you? I think it's super cool to be able to share as much as my world as possible. And people wanna see in. Um, they wanna see inside, they wanna be close. And not everybody, you know, there's different levels of, of access to me, but I wanted access to people so bad and would have done anything for it and everybody's just so closed off um, and, and don't want to don't want to be vulnerable to everyone um, and I love being open and vulnerable even though it comes with a whole slew of criticism um, I really love that and to have businesses and show people that we can be really successful and to um, be to, to industrialize something um, is a is a great way to bring an entrepreneurial spirit to the things that we're doing. Um, people need to understand that regardless if you're buying diesel, water, this truck, someone's making an income. How much value can that person add to your life? This person made money off of you today, you know. But can they give to you? Can they change their life? Can they change your standard? Um, if I can do that for you, I think that that's a really cool thing, and I think it's a value add both ways. Mm -hmm. Five job to try to do a lifestyle 
but they need to be able to pay the bills, right? They need to be able to put a decent lunch truck. And so what's kind of your advice for like that first step for the entrepreneur? Like, how do they find, am I going to do t-shirts? Am I going to do nine halters? Am I going to do coaching? Am I going to train horses? Like, how do I, what's my first step? I believe the first step is, we always talk about, it's not a lack of re resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness. So what do you have close to you? What can you do? What are you good at? What are you passionate about? And then take some action toward that. Ask some people around you. If there's people close to you that are driving the kind of cars you want to drive, living the lifestyle you want to live, walk up to them and ask them, what are you doing and can I help you do it? Um, that always seems to be the first place. I started out um, selling horses, matchmaking horses with people 15 years ago. The first thing I did is went to my neighbor that sold more horses in the country than anybody else and said, how are you doing this? Can I intern with you for free? Since I have a really demanding nine to five right now and I'm trying to break into this barrel racing world, time management is so crucial to my success at this point. And so I'm trying to pick everyone's brain on what do you do uh, to manage your time wisely. So maybe give us some of like your best like time saving tips or time management tips. The best thing we ever did was read a book called The One Thing. And we make a list every Sunday for that week. What is your one thing? We ask each other what our one thing is for that week. And we pick out the things that will pay the bills first. Um, what are the things that will pay the bills? And then after that, everything is secondary. So we start there. Um, if your one thing is to um, run an experiment every week to see if you can um, start working a little bit less and start doing things on the side a little bit more, run one experiment a week for that and schedule that in as your one thing that will pay your bills. Some things that will pay your bills aren't going to pay your bills right off the bat. So maybe you'll be coaching for free, or maybe you'll be cleaning stalls for free with someone that can teach you a skill later on. Always think about those things because it may not pay your bills today, but it could if you put enough time and diligence into that one thing. And we always, no matter what, make time for education, and if there's any money that is the best spent, it's in education and learning from others who are in a position that I want to be in, or just on audiobooks alone. Because information is so readily available, there is just no excuse to be behind. And if you're listening to the radio and watching TV, somebody like Fallon is out hustling you, and that's where she's going to get ahead and leave, leave you in the dust. And yeah, you don't have to be anybody special to educate right. yourself. You have the same 24 hours in the day as Beyonce. Get after it. Yeah. <laughs> no excuses. I love it. Okay, guys, we're almost back to the ranch, and so I know they're going to put me to work once we get there. We are going to resume this on our next drive. Coming back soon. Bye.